Welcome to this, the March update of the A Year in Our Garden series. Now because I was late doing the February update, it's really only been about three weeks since I brought you the last update. And what a three weeks it's been. Far more has happened in the outside world in the last three weeks than has happened in our garden. And of course I'm referring to the pandemic that is occurring at the moment and the government reactions to it in terms of locking down a lot of services uh, in some countries complete lockdown here in Tasmania so far it is simply a shutdown a lot of places where public may gather that has included my workplace as well uh, so while the last three weeks was very busy with many things happening and I was involved quite a lot with my work. I've now, as it's closed, I've taken leave for two or three weeks and that'll mean that I can actually catch up in the garden here and make a few things happen that have been neglected. Now, with these things happening, a lot of people are wanting to plant things in their garden for financial reasons or for reasons of simply being independent and being able to separate themselves, not go shopping as often. And look, I applaud that whole concept. I think it's really good, as I have said in previous videos. Now, in the Northern Hemisphere, this time of the year is great, March. I mean, you're moving towards spring and you can move out and start preparing your garden. Of course, depending on exactly where you are, climate-wise, as to how, whether it's early or late. But you need to look to local conditions, local advice as to when you should plant. Here in Tasmania where I am, it's not the ideal time for planting because we are in autumn now and winter is coming. There is a very limited range of things that you can plant in your garden. And it's just a little bit too late in some respects. But you can use this period to actually prepare and to look forward to what you're actually going to do in the new spring season. So for people that are thinking and preparing for spring, I suggest they perhaps go and start this year in our garden series, go and look at the early ones as to see what I was doing in my garden. Uh, I started it in July, so you know, July, August and, and so on. But right now, I have around me some of the things that I planted at the very beginning of March. Look, I planted these in a hurry before rain was expected, and it did rain. It rained for a day or so after, and really nice rain. So it was the perfect time to plant them. Because I was in a rush doing it in the evening, I didn't get any film that you can see. But what do I have? I have some English spinach here, which I had grown from seed that I had saved. And it's coming along nicely, and it won't be long now before that's going to be picking. And look, English spinach is something that you could still plant here in Tasmania this time of the year. It likes the cooler time. So if you haven't got any in, go ahead and plant and it should do something. It will slow down over winter, but it will actually live through winter and continue to grow in the spring. And of course you can plant it in late winter for spring as well. The other things that I've got is some cabbages, some cauliflower and some broccoli. Now the cabbages, I really wouldn't recommend planting cabbage uh, from now on. I think it's too late. It probably won't heart up uh, unless you are right down by the coast in a warmer situation, you might try. But anywhere cooler, it's not going to heart up. And what's going to happen is that in springtime, it's simply going to bolt. So probably not worthwhile. Also cauliflower, look, you might get away with cauliflower. You could have a go, but it's that little bit earlier, just these few weeks makes a significant difference this time of the year. Broccoli, I would say if you haven't planted any, now you could still plant some. It will cope with the cooler conditions. It will get really slow over winter, but it still will produce a crop. If it's a bit warmer, it will do better. I frequently grow broccoli in my greenhouse over winter and it does really well and comes a lot quicker. 
So broccoli, English spinach, two things that you could put in, uh, maybe the cauliflower, cabbage is probably only if you're really close to the coast in a warmer situation. Uh, I mean some spots I know that are right down by the sea, you know, you can grow potatoes outdoors all winter as well. Uh, it's amazing what you can do if you have a really close to the sea and it's a bit warmer. The other brassica that you can quite feasibly plant this time of the year, really good actually to plant this time of the year, is kale. Because being non-hearting, kale is uh, not going to have a problem with the fact that it is cooler. Uh, you're going to be able to harvest those leaves. Now I don't have any here, I have some in the raised beds. Uh, what I've got there at the moment is a perennial kale coming on. I usually grow the red Russian kale. I really like red Russian kale because I find it very versatile and I might still put some seed in. I had some failures with it in the spring this year and that's why I haven't got any growing at the moment. Of course I will in the next uh, probably week or two plant garlic uh, probably at the beginning of April and so if you haven't planted garlic you could go ahead and do that anytime now time to get garlic in. The bulk of my activities though in the garden over the last three weeks have been devoted to harvest. I have spent quite a lot of time harvesting uh, and bottling our plums. Now they're pretty much finished now there's hardly anything left on the tree most of them are either in bottles or we've given some away and I haven't made any video about that because I have a previous video. I'll put a link to that uh, about how I do our bottling with plums. Also the other thing that has taken a fair bit of time and more in the last week is the tomato crop. We've now just passed the equinox and tomato harvest is in full swing. One thing I'm noticing this year amongst these tomatoes is that they tend to be a little bit smaller than normal. Particularly these which were supposed to be Rouge de Marmonde, I'm probably not pronouncing that correctly. And realistically they are usually a large tomato and quite segmented. Now amongst these, look there's hardly an example, I might find one too, that really show much segmentation and they're all very small. Now I know some people may say that's because I don't prune but I never prune my tomatoes and they're usually a lot larger than this. Also the ones that I planted seed rather than the plants, these were plants that I purchased, the ones that I planted from seed are of reasonable size and showing the segmentation. That makes me wonder whether they mislabeled this variety and this is a different variety of tomatoes not really what it said it was. Can't be certain they're still tasty tomatoes and there's plenty of them so I can't complain. The other variety of tomatoes that I grow are these Romas. Now I mostly grow these for preservation not so much for just fresh eating to the table but they're great for tomato sauces bottling and they could also be dried look they've come in all sizes this year really like these nice big ones when they come but they are very heavy croppers there's heaps and heaps on and they will continue to ripen because they're a longer season tomato and ripen later they'll continue to ripen for a Oh, another two or three weeks at least uh, maybe even longer as they come I am processing them I have actually already made two batches of tomato sauce which will actually be sufficient for the year and most of the rest will probably go into uh, tomato puree similar to what I made last year and I have a, a video about that so I'll put a link to that if you want to have a look at it my wife found that that puree was very useful in the kitchen uh, we used all we had uh, and ran out quite early because we didn't make a huge amount of it last year and I'll make a lot more of it this year uh, it'll probably be the primary product that I produce from these tomatoes I would love to dry these but here in Tasmania because they're ripening 
late in the season. Uh, it's after equinox. You know, the sun has lost a lot of its sting. We're starting to get more cloudier weather, uh, more rain. It's really hard to sun dry them. And as we're off grid and relying on solar power, uh, you know, electrical drying is not really an option. So it's something that I have to really put some thought on to as to how I could achieve these to dry them. If anyone's got any ideas how you could do it without using electricity or the sun, I'd love to hear them. But Romas, look, in Tasmania, I think they're a great tomato to grow if you're really intending on processing. You can eat them at the table as a salad tomato, of course, uh, and we do late in the season because the others will have finished and these will still be around. But personally, I prefer other tomatoes that are juicier than these for fresh eating. We have, of course, been really feasting off this sweet corn over the last three weeks. Probably the bulk of it has now been picked, but there is a substantial amount still here. And look, it's starting to get a little bit on the mature side. It's still quite nice eating, but look, within a few days, it will start to get tougher and not as sweet. So what I'm going to do, uh, probably uh, in the next three or four days, I will get to doing it is to uh, pick the majority of this and put as much of it into the freezer as I can and look I'll probably I tend to steam it lightly uh, on the cob then cut it off and freeze it that way it's um, basically blanched and will be ready to eat and we'll have it over a longer period the, the corn I really enjoy growing some corn or sweet corn you know each year and uh, it comes around just for those few weeks of the year and it's really enjoyable. Now this sweet corn that I've got in the greenhouse, it's done basically what I expected it to do in the time. It's began to put out its cobs and has tussled up on top. It's amazingly tall, really doing fantastically well. It has reached the stage where it needs fertilization and I was reminded by a viewer that it's important in here to give it a shake and to let it fall because it doesn't have the wind here in the greenhouse to shake it and if you don't do that you may not get as good a fertilization so it's simply a matter of coming around every day and just giving them all a little shake and letting any of the uh, yeah I see it coming down there in dust and so that will uh, pollinate it and allow it to develop it's going to be interesting to see when this comes along for harvest I think we've probably got another probably at least four weeks before this is going to be ready to pick so I think my timing is going to be okay. Next to it of course is the Gardener's Delight the straw bale tomato and as you can see they're an absolute jungle and look I, this was a really aptly named tomato because it's a real delight to see these they form such beautiful crusses and they're delicious to eat, nice and soft inside. You tend to grab a ripe one as you go by and have a snack. The cucumbers are really beginning to slow off. You see the leaves yellowing now. There's still one or two coming that we will get, but it's not going to be a lot more now because the nights are really cooling. One of the important things to remember towards the end of the season with cucumbers and a lot of things but particularly with these don't leave it too late but not too early either is to actually let one or two like I've let this one in here mature and you'll see it's turned a nice yellow and that will then give me seed for next year don't do that too early either because if you let them start to mature too early it can retard your cropping. The same thing applies to these climbing beans. Towards the end of the season you need to leave a few for seed. Usually it's the case that there's some like these down here which I have missed when I was picking. And once they start to get bumpy like this they're really not so exciting to eat. So I leave those few that I've missed and that have got too mature to ripen up fully and for seed and let them start to dry. It'll be still probably a month or so before 
they dry and are ready to be taken in because these beans do go fairly late in the season and look they've been a fantastic picking the variety if you haven't uh, heard me mention it before is blue lake and i really recommend them as a climbing bean now there's a couple of other crops that i did some harvesting of yesterday and i took some film then and i'll let you have a look at it about a month ago i made some predictions that i felt this crop was going to be really good our potato box is basically empty so the time has come to start digging and to prove whether i'm right or wrong <laughs> so it's the moment of truth let's put the fork in and see what we find wow there is certainly lots there uh, the size on this one are not that good but See what we get out of here. Certainly lots on it. Well, the quantity there is not bad for one plant, but the size is a bit smaller than what I like and smaller than I expected. But we'll keep going, see what else is in here. That's better, that's more the size I'm looking for. I think that was around six plants that I've dug. The first ones weren't that good on size, but the last plant was really promising. Look at those, beautiful, good potatoes. Uh, it's quite a few this size, some smaller, but look, it's only taken me a few minutes to dig those and they will give us some potatoes for a few days. And I'll be back here digging more over the next month. Now while the harvest of that main crop of potatoes looks to be good, I can't say I have the same expectation for this late season crop. Because they hadn't shot, they've been uh, slower to come through than I normally would experience. I, I know often do plant them like that and I still get them through a bit quicker. Some have come quite well and others are only just coming through the ground now. That means that the ones that are just coming through the ground now probably really won't set any potatoes. That means this crop is going to be uh, quite small. The late crop is always smaller than the main crop, but this is going to be a bit smaller than I would normally expect. There's a high likelihood that we might then run out of some potatoes probably towards late winter hard to say at this point but it will put more pressure on me to actually try and grow uh, more in the greenhouse over winter so that we've got some potatoes to carry us through until that early spring crop comes in in December. Well it's now nearing the end of March and these chickpeas have been growing since oh, around mid-October so probably in excess of five months that they've been in the ground and I've decided it's time to harvest them. Look, there's a, still a mix here. There's some that are quite uh, dark and obviously got well-formed uh, peas in them. There's, look, even one or two flowers still coming around. There's some still green, but the weather now is changing. We're getting cooler nights and we're getting more rainy days. It's getting damper, so 
I'm a bit concerned that if I leave them much longer, I will start to lose some. And I think the bulk of the crop is now ready. Now I did lose a few in this area because the hens made it past my makeshift fence and got in one day, but didn't do a lot of damage. So my plan is basically to cut these uh, off, trying to leave the roots in the ground if I can so that I'm actually boosting the soil with that extra uh, nitrogen and the extra uh, organic material. And I'm then going to put them in these uh, bins here and I'll sit them somewhere that has reasonable daily warmth for a couple of weeks or maybe more to really dry off properly. Now I'm not a hundred percent certain I'm doing the right thing of course because I've never grown these before but one thing that does give me confidence is that these sound a little bit like a rattle. I don't know if you can hear the rattle but it's really the sound of dry peas in there in dry pods so that makes me happy well <clears throat> that's the crop harvested now yes they rattle but you, like me, might be wondering what's inside these pods. So let's have a look. I'm up a bit closer to the camera so you can possibly see better. I'll open one up and yeah, there's two chickpeas inside that pod. Uh, some only have one, but they look good chickpeas. So I'm quite happy at this stage. It's a matter of how the processing goes from now on. So that's the main summary of what's been happening over the last three weeks in our garden. The harvest will continue into April with these apples beginning to ripen now. It's not really very far before I need to start picking these golden delicious and also the Johnna Golds that are ripening as well. The golden delicious I find that if you want to keep them it's best not to leave them uh, on the tree too long and let them over ripen. Once some of them begin to golden, you know, to get some colour, then it's really good to get in and pick them. If you let them ripen too much on the tree, then they don't keep as well. Look, you can always leave a few if you don't have problems with birds and let them get really sweet on the tree because they're delicious eating. But if you want to store, uh, get them off a little bit early rather than later. As I have now got more time, I will be doing a few jobs in the garden. There's a couple of spots that I need to clean up and need to prepare for later planting. I also will, within the next week probably, which is very beginning of April, I will be planting my garlic. And the other thing that is dominating my time at the moment that is pulling me away from garden a little bit is that it is uh, firewood season and I'm quite busy with cutting and splitting firewood. The firewood that I'm cutting now is not really for this winter, it's for next winter, but I always like to keep that year ahead. If you uh, fall back, then you've got a lot of catching up. And so every year in the early autumn, I really like to get in and make sure that firewood's done before it uh, starts to get wet. And it's hard to get the uh, timber out of the forest. It gets just muddy and unpleasant. So I wish you all the best for your autumn garden and stay safe during this difficult time that the world's having at the moment. This is our little camping place. There's a fire and there's the soft padding to sleep. I'm going to lie down.